Hi friends, it's Sierra from Sierra's Crafty Creations. Today we're going to be doing a crochet tutorial for this super cute and super trendy hanging basket. You can find the written pattern for this in my Etsy and Ravelry shops as well. But today we're going to be doing the step-by-step -step video tutorial for this. Right now I'm currently holding my book of the month in there that I'm reading for my book club with me and my cousins. But the detailing on this is super cute and it will match everyone's style. So let's go ahead and jump into the materials you will need and let's get started. We will need a size 6 super bulky yarn, approximately 90 yards. You'll need a 9mm crochet hook. And other materials that you're going to need are a yarn needle and a pair of scissors. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using Lion Brand's Hometown USA yarn. I found this at Walmart for under $3 and you only need one ball to create your hanging basket. So just make sure that it's a size 6 super bulky and you will be good to go. Alright, and here's the 9mm crochet hook that I'm going to be using. It says US M13-9 mm and here is my yarn needle. Also, a darning needle is what it can be called sometimes. So let's go ahead and grab our yarn and our hook and let's jump into the pattern, friends. Let's go over the stitches that are going to be used in this pattern. We are going to be using chain, half double crochet, and half double crochet through the third loop, which is also known as the camel stitch. We're going to go ahead and grab our yarn from the center. Here you just have to put your fingers in down through the middle and pull out and you'll come out with a little lump like this that's totally normal. You're going to want to find the end of your yarn and we're going to start with creating a slip knot and to do that what I like to do is take the end of my yarn and wrap it loosely around my index finger two times and then I'm going to use my middle finger and my thumb to hold on to the yarn tail there and then I'm going to take the loop farthest back on my finger, I'm going to grab that and pull it over the second loop but still leaving it on my finger. And then I'm going to grab that loop there and then bring it over that loop and off my finger. And then I'm going to take the yarn tail here and I'm going to pull on that to tighten the knot and remove my finger and that's my slip knot. Now we're going to want to grab our crochet hook and put it right there in the middle through that loop. And once your crochet hook is through the loop, you're going to take the yarn that is still attached to your yarn bar and pull it to tighten it around your crochet hook. And now we can go ahead and start our project. So what we're going to do to start is we're going to start by chaining. And how we're going to do that is we're going to take our crochet hook with our yarn wrapped around our finger. We are going to grab our yarn on our crochet hook and pull through that loop that is around our crochet hook. So you're going to grab your yarn and pull through that loop like so and that creates a chain so that's one chain and we're going to do that again we're going to grab our yarn pull through the loop on our hook and we are going to chain again we're going to do this for a total of 22 chains so go ahead and keep doing that until you have a total of 22. this is what your chain should look like you should have 22 total and once you reach that, we'll go ahead and move on to row one, which we're going to be creating half double crochets in this row. So let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit here so that you can see the chains. We're going to skip those first two chains and we're going to create our first half double crochet in that third chain. You're going to wrap your yarn around your hook, insert into that third chain. You're going to grab your yarn, pull it through that chain, and now you'll have three loops on your hook. And we're going to grab our yarn with our hook, yarn over, and pull through all three of those loops at once. And that's your half double crochet. And we're going to keep creating half double crochets in every stitch so that chain right beside it and all the way down will be creating half double crochets. So we're going to yarn over our crochet hook, insert into that chain right beside the one that we just worked in. So that one right here where my finger is poking through. We're going to insert our hook. We're going to grab our yarn, pull back through that chain, and now we'll have three loops on our hook. Grab your yarn and pull through all three loops. And now you have your second half double crochet. And we'll keep repeating that all the way until the end. So yarn over, insert into the very next chain, grab your yarn, pull through that chain, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And 
once you make it to the very last stitch in your first row, I just wanted to come on and show you because sometimes it is hard to see, but it's that stitch right by the slip knot that we created at the very beginning. So you're going to yarn over, insert into that very last stitch there, grab your yarn, pull it through, and you'll have your three loops on your hook, grab your yarn and pull through all three. And now you've completed your very first row. Now let's move on to row two. We're gonna chain two, which is gonna grab your yarn, pull through the loop on your crochet hook. That's your chain one, grab your yarn, pull through the loop again, and that's your chain two. Now we're going to turn our work and we're going to start on our row two, which is where we're gonna be creating half double crochets in the third loop. So just like the first row where we created half double crochets, we're gonna be doing the same stitch, the placement will just be different in this row. Typically when we do half double crochets, we yarn over and insert here at the top of our stitch. That's the normal placement, but for the third loop, we're going to go up and under through this loop here. It kind of is like a ridge and a bump right there in the front. You're gonna take your hook, go under and upward, and that is the space where we're going to create our half double crochets. And you'll create them as normal, just like we did for the first row. And we're gonna create half double crochets in the third loop for every stitch around. So what we're gonna do, yarn over, and again, right in that ridge, right in the front, go up and under. Grab your yarn, pull through. You'll have your three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. So like I said, you're gonna be creating your half double crochets as normal. The placement is just gonna be in those ridges right there in the front. to meet you again at the end of row two just to make sure that we are not skipping the very last stitch because just like the first row it, it can be hard to find so we're going to work right here in this loop I just wanted to show you this is what it looks like without working the last stitch so you can see that there is a little bit of a space there so to create your last half double crochet in the third loop we're gonna go right here underneath this loop and we're going to grab our yarn pull through and then yarn over, pull through all three loops on our hook. And that is the last stitch in row two. And this is the back of our work. So it is quote unquote the wrong side of your work. So we're going to go ahead and move on to row three, which will be the front of our work. We're gonna chain two, just like we did to start row two. So you're gonna grab your yarn, pull through the loop on your hook, two times for a chain two, turn your work, and this is what the front will look like. So now that we did the half double crochet in the third loop, we created this really pretty ribbing or ridge right here in the front that really gives the hanging basket a lot of fun detail. So let's go ahead and move on to row three. We are going to create half double crochets as normal. So right here at the top where my finger is poking through, we're gonna insert our hook there. You should have two pieces of yarn over the top. And that is your opening right underneath those two pieces of yarn. You're going to put your crochet hook there, grab your yarn, pull it through that stitch, and create your half double crochet as normal. And we'll go ahead and do this all the way across. And for each row, you should have a total of 20 half double crochets in each row. But we're going to keep putting normal half double crochets in each stitch across. So you're going to yarn over, insert into the top of the stitch there, yarn over, pull through all three loops, and do that all the way across until you have your 20 half double crochets. And to end our row three, I just wanted to come in for the last stitch here. My finger is poking through. You might have to move your yarn a bit to see your last stitch, but you wanna make sure that you're putting your half double crochet right there at the very end, and we're going to chain two like we have been doing. So grab your yarn, pull through the loop on your hook, grab your yarn and pull through the loop on your hook, for your chain two and turn your work. Again, we are now looking at the back of our work and we are going to create our row four, which will be our half double crochet in the third loop row. So this is gonna be a repeat of row two. So we're gonna yarn over and 
go in this third loop right here. So that ridge, we're gonna take our hook going under and up, grab our yarn, pull through, and then yarn over, pull through all three loops and creating your half double crochet as normal. So we're doing it in the third loop for this row, just like we did in row two. So you're gonna do that for every stitch across. And again, you should have a total of 20 half double crochets at the end of each and every row. Hopefully you guys are getting the hang of the pattern. To start our next row, we're gonna chain two, turn our work, and now we're looking at the front of our work. And now we can see two of those really pretty ridges right there in the front. And now we are going to keep doing repeats. So for all the rows, all the odd rows where we're looking at the front of our work, so this is row five, all your odd rows will be half double crochet as normal. So right there at the top of your stitch is where you're gonna be placing your half double crochets. So all of your odd rows will be the same where we're just half double crocheting as normal right there at the top of our stitch through every stitch across for 20 half double crochets total. And this is how the end of row five should look for you. And we're, again, we're gonna keep repeating. So we are going to move on to row six and to do that, we are going to do our chain two and turn our work. And this is the back side of our work because we don't see those beautiful ridges. And for all of our even rows, so this row, row six, we are going to be half double crocheting in the third loop. So right there where my hook is, that's our third loop. And we're going to half double crochet and each third loop for each stitch across for a total of 20 half double crochets. So we're gonna keep repeating these two rows until we have a total of 15 rows. So we're on row six right now doing half double crochet in the third loop. So row seven is our odd row, so we'll be doing half double crochets as normal. And we'll keep going back and forth until you have completed your 15th row, and I'll meet you back then. And once you finish your 15 rows, this is what it should be looking like for you. It should be pretty much a perfect square. And what we're gonna do now is create our hanging loop at the very corner here. So you should still have your crochet hook in your work from the half double crochet, the last one that you created for the 15th row. And to create the hanging loop, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create chains. So we're gonna take our yarn, pull through the loop on our hook. That's our first chain. And we're gonna keep creating chains until we have a total of 10 chains. All right, and this is what your 10 chain should look like. And what we're gonna do to create the loop is we're gonna go back to that very last stitch that we created in our 15th row. Gonna turn our work here so we're looking at the back. And then that stitch right there, the very first stitch, we're going to insert our crochet hook. We're going to grab our yarn and pull it through. And we'll have two loops, but instead of yarning over, we're gonna take that first loop right there and put it in our crochet hook and pull it right through that second loop. And that is called a slip stitch. And now we're gonna to wanna to grab our scissors and we're going to cut our yarn. And I would leave about four or five inches of extra yarn just so that we can use that to weave in. And so we'll cut that there and we're just gonna take the loop that's on our hook and we're going to just pull it all the way through like that. And then we're going to grab our yarn and tighten it to create a little knot there at the base. And that secures our hanging loop right there at the top. All right, now that we have tied off our hanging loop, we are ready to sew up and construct our hanging basket. So you're gonna wanna lay the right side of your work facing downward. So you should be looking at the back of your work and we're gonna turn it so it is the shape of a diamond facing us and our hanging loop is at the very top. And we are going to take the right side corner there and fold it to the middle. And then we're gonna take the bottom corner and fold it up to meet that one in the middle. And we're gonna take the left side corner and fold it into the middle to meet all three. So it should look like a little envelope situation going on right now and then your top will be left open with your hanging loop right there at the top. So this is how we're going to fold it. 
so that we can sew on all the sides. And as you can see, if you just let go without smushing it down really good, it'll just unfold really quickly. So you might have to play with it for a bit, but I like to smush it down. And when you leave, move up your hands, it should stay like that. Just we're going to grab some scrap yarn and our yarn needle. And because we're using super chunky yarn, I'm going to show you guys a little tip or hack that I use to thread my needle because my opening on my needle is not that big. So it can be really hard to thread super chunky yarn. So I take my yarn label and I cut a really thin rectangle out of the yarn label paper there. And then I'm going to fold the piece of paper in half like this. And then I'm going to take the end of my yarn tail and I'm going to lay it in there like my yarn is the hot dog and the paper is the hot dog bun. And then I'm just going to slide it back. And then we're going to take the yarn needle and just thread it right through. Easy peasy. Voila. And you can keep that little piece of paper to thread any and all other pieces of yarn that you'll have for this project. So what I like to do is take my yarn and cut off about 12 inches just to be safe and we're going to cut it there and then we're going to make a knot at the bottom where we cut we're just going to create a knot right down there and i like to leave a little excess yarn at the end as well and now we're going to take our yarn needle and we're going to go in the very edge corner right down there at the bottom on my right hand side i like to go inward so that my knot is on the inside of my hanging basket like this and pull all the way until you get to your knot and then I leave that extra yarn tail on the inside and I will weave that in later so don't worry about that just yet and we're going to readjust here so that both of my pieces are lined up together and so that I can whip stitch it stitch for stitch and I'm going to go into my very first stitch here down at the bottom corner and I'm going to go through both sides and I'm going to pull my yarn all the way through. And the biggest thing is going through on the same side. So now I'm going to take my yarn needle again, entering through the same side, but going through both loops and the stitch right next to it and then pulling my yarn through. And this is just a whip stitch. You can definitely use whatever stitch you prefer. I just think this is the easiest and fastest way to go about it. All right, so I'm going through my next stitch, lining it up and pulling through both pieces. And you're gonna keep doing that stitch for stitch until you get to the middle point right there. And then we will start working downward on the other side. And once we get to the middle point, I like to go right here on the side of this stitch and the side of this stitch and whip those two pieces together just to get a nice seamless look. And that will be my last stitch there. And I pull tight and then I'm going to start working downward with my third fold over there and I'm going to work from the middle. And again, lining up stitch for stitch as best as I can because there's not actual stitches on this side. So just place your needle as evenly as you can on both sides and line them up as best as you can and we'll go ahead and do the same thing that we did there and putting our needle in on the same side and going through both pieces and once you get down to the very bottom corner here i just like to pinch it and make sure there's no hole down there and i will make a extra final stitch right there and then I am going to create a knot to secure that at the end. And then we're going to have to weave in our ends. So once you have a knot there, we are going to take that excess yarn tail and we're going to pull it in through the inside. And this is just going to make sure that it's not popping out on the outside. And then I'm going to turn my basket inside out so that I'm looking on the inside. I'm going to create another knot here. And then we are going to weave in any and all tails that we have. So you're going to take your yarn needle, 
with your yarn tails on it and just weave it in through many different stitches going different directions and then you'll cut those off so here's me weaving in my first end so I'm just going through a few stitches going upward and then I'm gonna pull through and now I'm going to go downward through some stitches I like to go a few different directions just to really secure it and hide that tail And once you're all done, you'll cut it at the base there. And I like to move my yarn around a little bit, stretch it out to get the tail in there all nice and snug and hidden. And you'll do the same process for any and all other yarn tails that you will have on your project. You're, you can pull out your piece of paper and use that to thread your other, your other tails there, just like I did before. And put it on your needle and you can go ahead and weave in those ends and once you're done weaving in all those ends you're going to go ahead and flip your hanging basket right side out so that those pretty ridges should be on the outside now and they're going at a diagonal so so cute and now your hanging basket is completely finished you guys congratulations you did it i really really hope that you like your hanging basket i absolutely love mine and I would love to hear what kind of things you guys are putting in your baskets. Like I said, I like to use mine for my book that I'm reading for each month because I'm a part of a book club, but you could also put pretty much anything in there. Here's a bag of my crochet hooks that fits really snug in there and super, super cute and will keep everything organized in my craft space. But this is it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up on this video and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more crochet and knit tutorials. Thank you so much. Happy crocheting, friends.